So, <clears throat> what is the most important interest rate in the British market? You might be thinking, that's easy. It's the Bank of England rate, the one that uh, Mervyn King and his buddies uh, reveal periodically. But you'd be wrong. There's a more important rate still, and it influences every aspect of your life, particularly if you are someone who has a mortgage. And the rate is called, wait for it, LIBOR. Now, that's another piece of market jargon. So in this video, I'm going to cover what LIBOR is, roughly how it's calculated, but not in too much detail, and why it matters so much. Why, if it's a rate you've never considered before, or thought sounds a little uninteresting, why you ought to pay some attention to it, at least, at the moment. Okay, so what is LIBOR? Well, naturally, it's a horrendous acronym. It stands for the London Interbank Offered Rate. Okay, London Interbank Offered Rate. And there is a very similar rate called LIBID, which is another acronym, short for the London Interbank Deposit Rate. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, imagine I'm a bank, and what I've done as a bank is I try to make money by basically charging people more for the funds that I loan out uh, than basically I have to pay for those funds. All right, so I try and take a, a cut in the middle. And imagine, if you will, uh, let's say for argument's sake, that I have managed to borrow a hundred million pounds at, I'm going to make up a number, 3% interest. So I've got an outstanding 100 million pound debt at 3%. But that's fine because I know that I can lend 70 million of it straight on to my commercial clients and charge them 4%. All right, so I've taken 100 million, on which I'm paying 3%, and I'm lending out 70 million to my clients at 4%. That's great, so there's a nice little profit margin. There's also a gap. What about the other 30 million? Am I just going to sit on that and let it sort of rot? And the answer is no. All right, I can't afford to do that. So I haven't got any commercial clients I can lend the, the 30 million spare to. So what I do is I think I'll stick it on deposit in the interbank market. I'll find a nice home for it at another bank. Okay, so imagine I phone round a few banks and say I've got 30 million kind of spare. Um, I'm thinking about putting on deposit and they say for how long? And I might say, well, overnight or for three months. There's various options available and I get quoted a rate. So that's fine. Okay, so I can stick that spare 30 million on deposit in the interbank market until I find a more lucrative way of making money from it. Now, <clears throat> that's going on all the time. So imagine there are banks thinking, well, I've got a shortfall on my books. I need to borrow a little bit of money overnight in the interbank market, i.e. from other banks, okay, for one month, for three months overnight, or I might need to deposit money in the, over in the um, overnight market or the three-month market in the interbank market. So there are banks all the time looking for a short, hopefully low-risk way to kind of square their books, if you like. Uh, some of them are borrowers, some of them are depositors, and that's where the interbank market comes from, okay? And uh, naturally, because the interbank market features banks lending and borrowing from one another, banks are supposedly, let's ignore the credit crunch for a moment, meant to be high credit worthy institutions. So rates in the interbank market tend to be pretty competitive, all right? So how does that link to what I said at the start of the video? Well, there is a thing called the London interbank offer rate. Here's how it works, all right? It's a crucial rate, and I'll explain why in a moment. Imagine the British Bankers Association, that's an organization that represents the banks, were to phone round 16 of the top banks in the UK and ask them for the rate. Say, we want to know what you're charging to lend money to other banks in sterling. And the banks say, fine, you're the British Bank Association, so here's our rate. And they say, we want the rate for different periods. So we want the rate you uh, basically would charge another bank for borrowing overnight, for three months, for one month, and so on. They say, that's fine, we can give you those rates. Now, those rates will change tomorrow night uh, because the rate that one bank prepared to lend to another has to take account of credit risk, that's the event of not being repaid, and one or two other things. But nonetheless, the British Bank Association says, give us that rate. And then it phones 15 other banks, says, give us your rates, because you're all in competition. So we're not going to assume they're necessarily identical. And it gets the 16 rates, knocks off the top four and the bottom four, this is the mathsy bit, averages the eight in the middle, not going to bore you with the details of how that's done, and publishes one number, a 
and says, here is today's London interbank offer rate for somebody looking to borrow, let's say funds from one of these 16 banks for three months, all right? So the LIBOR rate is an average rate published by the British Bankers Association every day, and it represents the cost of borrowing in the interbank market. Now that's not something that Tim Bennett can do, much as I'd like to, all right? I don't get to borrow in the inter interbank market for the simple reason that I am not a bank, okay? And most companies don't either. Tesco can't just tap into the interbank market. There's a clue in the name, it's not a bank either, all right? But that interbank market is crucial because the participants in the interbank market are the people that the likes of me and Tesco do actually borrow from. So whatever that LIBOR rate is, it's going to determine things like how much I pay on my mortgage, okay, because there's no way that a bank is going to charge me less than the LIBOR rate. That's the rate it can actually borrow funds at. All right, it's going to charge me a hell of a lot more, okay, and there's no way that a company like Tesco is going to be able to borrow at the LIBOR rate necessarily. There's probably going to be a little premium added on when it approaches one of those 16 banks for a loan, okay. And remember, LIBOR is a variable rate. It moves, okay? Why does it move? Well, it reflects fear in the interbank market. The more worried the banks are, the more they'll tend to push up their individual lending rates even to other banks, and therefore the higher that average LIBOR figure is going to go based on 16 of them, all right? Uh, and it also reflects uh, what they think is going to happen in the future, uh, expectations of uh, inflation and so on. So it's a fairly crucial rate. But let's focus on that fear factor for just a moment. Now, is there just a sterling LIBOR rate? And the answer is no. Because if you think about it, although it sounds logical that as a, as a bank you'd want to borrow sterling from other banks, in fact, you can borrow a range of currencies. It is possible in the London interbank market to borrow euros from other banks as a bank, to borrow dollars from other banks as a bank, okay? And therefore you have rates known as, I suppose not surprisingly, Euro LIBOR, that's the amount being charged as an interest rate in the interbank market to borrow euros, okay? And you have dollar LIBOR, all right? And that dollar LIBOR rate for six months, that's the price of borrowing, if you like, or the average price of borrowing dollars from a London bank over a three-month period, is the one that the Federal Reserve has recently been targeting. And the reason for that is it's getting nervous, okay? So here's why LIBOR matters. Okay, um, basically remember LIBOR is set by the commercial banks that operate in the London market, so it doesn't have to be the same as the Bank of England rate. And indeed, it isn't. Right now as I shoot this video, okay, the Bank of England rate is around half a percent and sterling LIBOR is double that. Okay, now that's only around one percent or so, which you might think oh, that's quite low. Um, so why is it that uh, I can't pay less than three or five percent on a mortgage. Why can't I borrow at that LIBOR rate? And the answer is, I'm afraid, tough. Um, the banks view themselves not as charities. They view themselves as making as much money as possible. They're nervous right now. So they're gonna whack on a fair old spread, as it's called, between the LIBOR rate, which is the one they can borrow at, and Tim Bennett's mortgage rate, which could be three or five times higher. And the higher LIBOR goes, and it is creeping up at the moment, the higher those mortgage rates are going to go too, all right? So when LIBOR starts to move, you want to get in and fix your mortgage as quickly as you possibly can, some would say, okay? Um, now, in another video I deal with, can the Fed save Europe? But it's also worth just um, bearing in mind, you will see a lot of commentary on the euro and dollar LIBOR rates the dollar LIBOR rate in particular, and just a reminder as to why, it's because that is the rate that the Fed has been trying to do something about, okay, with its recent move uh, to open up the dollar swaps market. As I say, I do deal with that in another video. Uh, and that rate represents what London banks are charging each other to borrow dollars over typically a three month period, okay? So in summary, we have this vital rate in the interbank market in London called LIBOR. It's vital because it represents really the commercial minimum rate available in the London market for borrowing, primarily sterling, but also other currencies like dollars and euro. In that sense, it matters more than the Bank of England rate, and it's often different to the Bank of England rate. When LIBOR starts to rise, fear is stalking the market, like a, a big stalking thing, 
okay? And the final point to bear in mind is this. LIBOR by itself doesn't mean much. Most numbers don't. So if someone says, well, LIBOR is now 1%, Tim, in a way you could say, well, 1% compared to what? Okay, well, I've just said compared to the bank rate, but what else? Are there other rates in the global market like LIBOR? I mean, do the Americans use LIBOR? The answer is no. The Americans have their own rate, which I'm going to cover in another video, by the way, coming up soon, called the overnight index swap rate. Sounds a little bit horrendous, definitely needs another video, okay? But what people like to do, in a nutshell, is compare the London LIBOR rate, which is a purely commercial banking rate, with something like that overnight index swap rate in the States, which is influenced heavily by the New York Federal Reserve Central Bank. And when the gap between those two starts to widen, people start to get nervous, all right? And just to indicate what's happening at the moment, okay, that gap is roughly nine times what it was, okay, just a matter of a few years ago, all right? So, in my next video, I'll take that last point on in a lot more detail, but the message from this video is if you've never considered LIBOR to be an important rate before, now would be a good time to change your view.